As a YouTuber, I normally work on my videos entirely by myself. I do the projects, I plan the videos, I film the videos and I edit the videos by myself. This also means that shots where the camera has to move are really difficult, especially if I also have to be in the shot at the same time. Normally the camera is mounted on a tripod and you can only see me through one angle. Of course I can add a second camera or a third or a fourth to make things a little bit more interesting. Or I could film in a relatively wide angle and crop the image to add a little bit of a motion effect. And then there's tools to help me. I borrowed this motorized camera slider from a friend which allows me to do some really cool shots. However, it moves pretty slowly, which is why I generally speed up the footage from this. And also the motor is pretty loud, which is why I can't use the audio from shots that I do with this. In my last video, I actually used a long rope that was attached to the handle of my tripod in order to move the camera while I was moving. Normally shots like we've been doing today are not possible for a one-person YouTube crew which is why I'm really happy that my friend David agreed to help me out today and operate the camera for me. But wouldn't it be cool if we could get rid of him and still get shots like this? What do you mean, get rid of me? To get shots that require a moving camera there are some options. I could use a better camera slider, which is expensive or even a robotic camera arm, which is super crazy expensive. The one technology that actually intrigues me the most is a cable camera system. Let me show you what I mean with this prototype that I built. This is called a cable camera system because the camera is suspended from several cables, or really thin threads in my case. The cable mounting points have pulleys and each cable ends in a cable winch so that the lengths can be adjusted separately. By changing the lengths of the cables, the camera can be moved to any point within the tube that is defined by the four cable mounting points and the ground beneath it. There are several commercial systems that work like this and some makers have also already built similar ones. I especially like the one by Scanline. Her system is called Tuco Flyer and it's called Tuco Flyer because it autonomously follows her cat Tuco around the workshop. Follow the link in the description to find out more about the Tuco Flyer. My prototype is controlled through an ESP32 development board. The ESP32 is a powerful microcontroller with a ton of nice features like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and lots of other things. It's also a dual core processor. I currently run the low level motor control on one core while the other core does all the high level computations. Each motor has its own TMC2208 stepper motor driver which makes sure that the motor movement is smooth and silent. The motors are NEMA 17 stepper motors, the same kind you can commonly find in a 3D printer. The motors have 3D printed winches attached to their shaft with a diameter of 63.661977236 mm. Why? Because 63.661977236 times pi is 200 mm, which means that one 360 degree turn of the winch shortens or lengthens the cable by exactly 200 mm. In the current configuration, a full revolution of a motor takes 400 steps, so every step of a motor corresponds to 0.5 mm cable length. The mounting points consist of 3D printed pulleys that redirect the strings. The camera is attached to a simple 3D printed mounting plate. I'm using a 360 degree camera here. It has two very wide angle lenses, one for each side, so that it can record almost seamlessly in all directions. This means that I don't really need a gimbal if I want to change the view of the camera. I simply record everything all around and decide later which part I want to keep. To control the cable camera, I think of the space above my desk as a Cartesian coordinate system similar to how a 3D printer does it. One corner of the desk corresponds to coordinate 0, 0, 0. One edge of the table is the x-axis, the other edge is the y-axis and the z-axis goes straight up. 
To move the camera from a point A to another point B, we must adjust the cables correctly. Let's say the camera is currently at point 200, 500, 300. Since we know the positions of the mounting points, we can calculate the cable lengths. For example, this cable is attached to the point at 0, 800, 800. We can subtract the camera coordinates from the mounting point coordinates, then square the resulting values, sum them up, and finally take the square root. This gives us the length of the cable. Once we've done this for all four cables, we know how long they are at the moment. We can do the same thing for the point that we want to travel to. If our destination lies at 900, 300, 600, we can simply calculate the lengths that the cables should have for the camera to be at that position. Since we know how long the cables are at the moment, we can adjust their lengths to move the camera to where we want it to be. Now this method has some drawbacks. One major one is that if, for example, the camera needs to travel from one corner to the opposite corner, the other two cables would first need to get shorter and then longer again in order to support the camera the whole way. That's why I actually divide the way that I want the camera to travel into small chunks of currently 5mm. So I move the camera 5mm in the direction I want it to go, then move it the next 5mm until we've arrived at the point where it should be. We still get a more or less continuous motion because there are no stops at any of these sections. What do you think? Does my math make sense? Do you have a better idea how to solve this? Feel free to let me know in the comments if you like. Oh yes, and I need a name for my cable camera system. If you have a good idea for that, let me know as well. Obviously there are still a lot of improvements to make. It's still pretty wonky, which is probably due to currently suboptimal motor control and also the pulley system could use a redesign. And there is a long list of features that I would like to add in the future. Of course there is a lot of work to do until this is really usable, but I think I've taken a nice first step here. If you want to check out the source code or the 3D model files, go find my GitHub link in the video description. Thanks again to David who helped me film this video, go check out his YouTube channel, the link is, of course, in the video description. I'm also very pleased to be able to welcome several new patrons this month. A huge thank you to these awesome people and their support. If you would like to join them, you know where to find the link. That's it for this video, see you next time on Matu Makes.